This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is The Chris Abraham Show, Season 5, Episode 57. My name is Chris Abraham, and uh, today I want to talk about Trump derangement syndrome and uh, this uh, persistent belief and feeling that we are, we are royally fooked based on a, I don't know, a fascism, a Nazism, a Christo-fascism, a white supremacy, uh, uh, and a conspiracy of anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-immigrant, uh, anti-black, anti-brown, anti-Asian, anti-Pacific Islander, anti-liberal, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, etc., etc., etc. And I would dare say that what everybody's really afraid of is they're afraid of uh, the, they're afraid of, what they're afraid of is they're afraid of populism. Uh, Trump doesn't represent Trump. Trump has been able to activate uh, American populism. He's activated American populism, and all the populists are driven to him. Now, other words for populism, you could look at, I, I'm going to look at a positive wording, not anti-trans, anti-this, anti-that, or anything about hate or hatred or anything like that. Because everybody seems to be hating everybody else and nobody seems to love anybody else except themselves. Um, what is a, what is the most, uh, what, what is represented here? I would say that what is represented here is not even nationalism. This isn't a nationalism thing. There's some feelings about what my America should look like, and so that would be nationalistic. But both sides use the language of nationalism. The left uses the, for whatever reason, they don't hate America anymore. They love America, but America needs to be purged of 75 to 80 percent of all its people in order to be livable. Um, so that, is, and the interpretation of the constitution is very different than, uh, the rights, the, uh, the, the interpretation of equality is equity. The interpretation of, of, uh, of, uh, of the rule of law is weighted. Uh, there are so many issues with regards to that, but both sides say that they're pro-America that they're pro-rule of law, that they're pro-morals, um, they're pro-mores, they say that they're pro-constitution, they say that they're pro-the people, and they always say they're pro-democracy. Um, but I don't even know what democracy means. Democracy seems to be one of those opportunistic words, such as climate change, or veganism, or, or organic, or uh, sustainability or equity or um, any of the other words that seem to be uh, euphemisms for something menacing, something menacing. Using pretty words to cover up menacing um, is something that America used not to do, right? Back in the day, America's, America had a department of war, not a department of defense. Um, back in the day, uh, the only people who said motherland, fatherland, or homeland were the enemies. Only the enemies would have said homeland security. Only the em enemies would say protect your homeland or love your homeland. The good guys say protect America and love America. What is homeland security? Why not uh, American security or USA security or 
uh, even national security. Why not? Why homeland? Homeland is exactly like Vaterland and Mutterland. Um, so it doesn't make any sense to me, right? Like, why not? Um, why not make anything that's evil sound really sweet? Um, both sides talk about, you know, uh, the Prince of Peace and the Prince of Light and the and the um, uh, back to populism. What what people are afraid of is the ubiquity and the power behind populism. And by populism, I also include tribalism and a little bit of jingoism. I would say the idea of nationalism, but it is something that it seems to me uh, the populist tribalist Americans, whether that tribe is Mormonism or it is uh, ruralism or whether it's uh, conservatism or whether it's Christianity or whether it's um, frick, tribes don't even care about being Latinx. They care about being Cubano or, or Guatemalan or Salvadorian or Mexicano or whatever, right? Like, so what seems to be is this seems to be less about Christo-fascist or Christo-fascism or, uh, Trump as, um, as a neo-Hitler or neo-Mussolini or even when people are really crazy, comparing him to everybody, Pol Pot and, and Stalin and, and, uh, and who else? Uh, uh, Marx and Lenin and uh, whomever. It seems like what everybody fears is this uh, populism, because everybody can agree when it comes to populism. Uh, the lefties, like, like I say in many of my episodes, like Jimmy Dore and... Uh, and even Joe Rogan, and um, even even um, Sagar and Crystal Ball from Breaking Points, and uh, Russell Brand, and like even even freaking like um, Alex Jones, and uh, I just it's incredible to see who is jumping on the populist uh, on the populist train. Which is really funny because, like, up until now, uh, conservatism in the Republican Party has been defined by being uh, fiscally conservative and and socially conservative, right? And populism doesn't demand n either fiscal conservance, conservatism or social conservatism. You can be a populist and you can care about uh, union jobs and you can care about, like, you don't even have to be a small government person. And the only reason why um, the Democrats have not embraced all their progressive populists is because they don't want them. The, the left has um, decided that uh, Christians, uh, leftist populists, uh, leftist um, uh, nationalists, uh, leftist uh, sub People on the left who, who don't have any experience in the academy, have no experience and a desire for um, any of the ideologies that are present in the left now. Like, there are a lot of dumb country bupkins who identify with being part of kind of an old school progressivism. But that, remember, like, before 1965 or 1968... Progressivism was a was a a white liberal thing, and it included working class people. It included l unions. Um, it uh, it might have even been a little bit anti Semitic and anti black, and and not wanting those people to be part of their discussion. So, like the entire uh, Trump, the entire Trump bandwagon could easily have been. Um, uh, leftist populist, leftist populism, but nobody in the leftist populist front, uh, they do not want establishment neolibs. They do not want foreign wars. They don't care a thing about Ukraine. They don't care. They, they don't have, most of them don't even have necessarily college educations, not necessarily high school education. The, the only place that exists for populists is, um, places like the Green Party, 
places like uh, third parties, uh, but they've found a lot of power uh, throwing their hat in with Trump, right? When you have Tulsi Gabbard, who is not only like she's part, like she's actively some sort of uh, fork of Hinduism, part of allegedly a part of some sort of um, uh, personality, cult of personality run by her dad, like a real extreme left winger, a definite pot, definite populist, someone who also cares about God and country, even if her God is Vishnu and, and Ganesh and, um, and uh, uh, Krishna, that's neither here nor there. Like you have a lot of people like that. And a lot of people like that have more in common with other populists than they do have with establishment left and right, neolibs and neocons. And that's what's scaring everybody. I believe that Trump derangement syndrome is a deeper fear. And I believe that people like Gaffigan are smart enough to realize that Trump is merely a shameless, fearless, um, what is the, comment dire, um, what did, uh, what did Kevlar, no, not Kevlar, um, stainless steel, I'm sorry, nonstick pans are made of Teflon. So like, um, if Nixon were more like Trump, he would have never resigned and retired. Um, if, uh, if many of these fools, like, you know, Trump is fearless. He has the superpower of being a billionaire and having the most white entitlement you've ever seen. I mean, I guarantee you that when he looks in the mirror, he's, he's never been as good looking as the man he sees when he sees in the mirror today. Uh, my friend Mark is like that. My friend Mark sees the most beautiful, studly, gorgeous man in the mirror whenever he looks in the mirror. And even though that's his energy, he's definitely got BDE. God, I hope the guy's packing. I don't know. We're not, I, you think I'd be close enough to him to know, but um, his, you know, five foot ten, forty regular frame belies the confident of an eight foot tall uh, NBA star. But um, what Gaffigan, and I recently saw an interview between Gaffigan and Joe Rogan and saw the guy from the quartering talking about Gaffigan and he keeps on dismissing Gaffigan as being permanently broken minded because of his uh, Trump derangement syndrome and that this existential feeling that Trump um, has destroyed the world, will destroy the world, uh, will have, should have, could have, does, um, that just the the criminal, the monster, the tyrant, the despot, the fascist, the Hitler, uh, what he did is way worse than what um, that uh, that hustler from uh, that that uh, hustler that what's his name TDE no um, SDE uh, Friedman whatever Baker Banker Friedman whatever that kid's name is like. Everything he says is like, well, Hunter might be a piece of shit, but he's not remote. Like, you don't think he's equal to how terrible Trump is or um, um, Bank Friedman, um, Sam Bank SBF. SBF might be a terrible piece of shit, but you can't even remotely think he's equal to what Trump is or that guy Hitler. You don't think he's remotely as bad as what Trump did or or 9-11. You don't think uh, Al-Qaeda and... and um, 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 uh, Saddam Hussein or, or, or Gaddafi, you don't think anybody's as bad as Trump or, um, Osama bin Laden. You don't think he's like, you know, how dare they even remotely suggest that, um, 9-11 or Pearl Harbor or World War II or the, or the, um, uh, Holocaust of the Jews and the, um, uh, the other, uh, non-consistent, inconsistent with the Russian view of, of pure bloodism. You don't think that the Holocaust or, or Halmador, you don't think that the, that, uh, Lenin and Lenin's, or was it, this is where my memory of, uh, I think it was Stalin or Lenin, Stalin, one of them, um, starved, uh, Poland and Ukraine, uh, to the point of, of very willful and intentional, um, uh, cannibalism and resulted in millions of people dying directly from hunger. 
um, and all these things have nothing compared to uh, the fact that Trump didn't take the White House back. He left the White House, right? He left the White House. Nobody needed to uh, swat the White House and extract uh, Trump from the White House when his when his uh, when Trump's um, term was done. Uh, he left the White House and Biden moved in. There was no taking of the White House. There was no taking of the Capitol. There was no gunplay. There was nothing. So it has to be either an alternate reality or it has to be a larger fear. And I believe the larger fear is that Trump, Trump's popularity even today, in spite of the fact that he was the most dangerous person ever to live on planet Earth, um, and that he deserves to be in jail for a hundred years doesn't belie the fact that he is just a catalyst. He is a dangerous, important catalyst to activate the 80% of Americans who want to keep their Jesus, want to keep their, uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, want to keep their Buddha, want to keep their, um, their boys as boys and girls as girls. They want to keep, they, they want to be observant Catholics and, uh, and, and not be considered to be domestic terrorists. They want to be able to not be held, um, hostage to a new language or a new generation or a, a new speak. Um, and they feel like they have the collective, they have the collective negotiation power of a union. And that union is pop uh, populism and if these various and sundry tribes if the catholics and the evangelicals and the mormons and the scientologists and the buddhists and the jews i'm talking about like orthodox um hasidic talking about anybody who didn't want to take these didn't want to be locked down didn't want to have their liberty curtailed didn't want to to need to take a shot didn't didn't want to be told what to do, wanted to maintain their isolationism, wanted to maintain their tribalism, did not want to be pushed into integration with the larger corpus, wanted to decide that they would worship uh, their God with higher intensity than, than, the human, uh, than humanism or atheism or materialism or socialism or Marxism or even worse, scientism. There's all these feelings that um, because the uh, what's the the right GOP traditional neocon and religious right and um, socially conservative and socially um, and and fiscally conservative uh, small government is not the GOP anymore. That's why uh, the GOP has sort of joined forces with the the neo libs and the neocons who are in the uh, the middle, who are in the establishment middle, are having to join forces, but their numbers are minuscule because honestly, uh, according to modern cult of Jesus, you don't have to, you can be a sinner and still love Jesus. You can be, you can, you can, you can have an abortion. You can uh, get yourself tattooed up. You can you can do all kinds of terrible things and still be and still have the sin washed away uh, by the blood of Jesus, right? So you can you do not need to be held to an account. You can have personal faith. Your tribe can include pro-choice. Your tri- the larger populist organization can include hippies. Can include vegans. There are right-wing vegans. There are left-wing carnivores, right? Like the idea of wanting to uh, not be told not to participate in the cultural re-education, whether that's true or not, this idea of climate change or this idea of a universal uh, restaging. Uh, people believe, uh, whether it's true or not, that there's a certain level of um, reset um, People believe in conspiracies about 2030. They, everybody knows uh, World Economic Forum. Everybody on the left, extreme left and extreme right. Everybody in the populist world knows about Davos. Everybody knows, like, 
the entire world has become way more Alex Jones than they've ever become way more uh, Rachel Maddow. Like, people aren't even, like, just Joe Rogan anymore. People have gone completely down the rabbit hole, and they know they've downloaded unlimited Kindle books about the Great Reset and about these plans of sort of uh, the suffering that the suffering, the opt, the nudging and the suffering that is going to be imposed on free peoples of the world in order to mitigate the the apocalyptic future. And people who have their belief in Christ and and Muhammad, peace be upon him, and who have their um, uh, their their faith based on on uh, uh, the teachings of Buddha and reincarnation and heaven and hell and demon and demons and jinn and all these other things, who believe that we live in a holographic universe anyway, and who believe that these are all trials and tribulations of the flesh in front of a, 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 a spirit head, a godhead, they're not going to care as much about your cataclysms on earth as much as they're going to care about the cataclysms of their soul. So no matter how much you try to nudge them, nudge them, nudge them, nudge them. My mother said nudge, like being a nudge. So same thing, nudge them or nudge them. No matter how aggressively you're going to do that, they're going to consider those things to be spiritual um, spiritual tests instead of like, I better do this to save my own neck, right? There are enough of those people, um, even though uh, there's plenty of people who pander, plenty of people who will uh, just follow orders. There's enough people who will do your dastardly plans that you never know who you honestly never know whether they're a double agent, whether they're a triple agent, whether they're uh, appeasing you, whether they are one way in front of you to keep their job in another way. These are things that Americans completely fall for every time. Americans are pretty stupid, right? Like, so we invade Iraq. And we all know from the stereotypes that um, the tribes of Iraq and Afghanistan have been there a thousand years. So, and they've been occupied a thousand times. So every time they've been occupied, even the tribes that were occupied by Saddam Hussein to become the nation state of Iraq, even those tribes were maintaining their family and their faith-based tribes within, if you will, underground while the nation state thing was happening or when you know, when America was there or when Iran is there now or when whoever is there. Same thing with Afghanistan. Nothing changed. We all talk about this Taliban retaking and, and the subservience of women. Nothing's changed in a thousand years. The only thing that's changed is that uh, city folk are no longer to remain city folk. Like there's always been, you know, when a new people take over, it becomes Russia for a little while, right? Only Kabul and maybe a couple other big cities. And then the moment America leaves, lots of people are enriched. The only reason you let someone take over you is so you could pander to them and extract as much resource, money, and weapons as humanly possible so that after they finally are beat down and leave, you have enough money, assets, power, and weapons to return to the wars that you have with the other tribes. This happens in North Africa. This happens in sub-Saharan Africa. This happens, you know, when when Russia, Wagner, France, America goes into Africa, um, they enrich warlords. They give power. They give weapons. They give resources. Um, America's desperately hoping that they'll have some sort of outcome. But the moment uh, the will of the people changes and you cannot quite or the will of the weather. The weather is fickle. The, 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 the hot spots on the earth change, 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 right? Last week it was Ukraine. This week it's Niger, Niger. Next week it's China. Next week it's Taiwan. Next week it's Hong Kong. The week after that it'll be back to Ukraine. It doesn't matter. If you're a smart company, you'll, 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 let, uh, you'll let daddy come in You'll let daddy fill up your bank accounts. You'll let daddy buy you an Aston Martin. You'll let daddy pay for your apartment. You'll let daddy 
uh, kill your enemies. And then when daddy leaves, you'll be in a better position to exert force based on daddy's weapons, daddy's monies, daddy's resources, daddy's power. Unless, of course, there's too much of a vacuum. It's your job when daddy leaves to step in there and fill the vacuum and become the de facto leader. If the U.S. doesn't like that for very long, and if you try to exact too much will of your tribe and don't kind of go for longer term appeasement policies in order to keep daddy away, then some other daddy is going to come in. You're going to have to go through the same process again. But many people have gotten generational wealth just by being able to suck daddy off for a little while and then knowing that the will of the people is going to be fickle. Um, tribes care about thousand years. Tribes care about hundred years. And honestly, um, America uh, rarely, like we were able to stay in Afghanistan for 20 years. Uh, and, you know, kudos to us. That was because we have professional armies and we don't throw uh, the kids of voters into the uh, gris, grizzle, grizz mill, the grizzle mill, the sausage mill, the, the meat grinder anymore. Um, we will eventually, because what we're going to want to do is we're going to find all those people who loot and steal and are antisocial, and we'll find ways to, instead of letting them loose, or instead of sending them to jail, we're going to start giving them the opportunity to stay out of jail and go to war like we did in Vietnam. Um, hey, you're going to either go to war, you're either going to go to jail for 20 years, or you're going to be able to fight in Ukraine or fight in Niger or fight in China or whatever. Uh, it's a matter of time. So what maybe Gaffigan is afraid of, if he's sophisticated and not just a freaked out, uh, Trump derangement syndrome, like low IQ individual, he's more afraid of populism because if populism works right, um, the pop, the people are going to, are going to actually, I mean, everybody's talking like, uh, what is it called? The, um, uh, um, AOC, uh, is always talking about, it's not looting. It's, it's taking bread to feed the family. Well, at some point, um, too many people are going to get les miserables and they're going to realize that, uh, well, if the, if the people of color, the poor people of color can take bread or they're going to read further into the book, um, Victor Hugo or into the, uh, razzle dazzle jazz hands Broadway spectacle that I love les miserables, les mis. And they're going to realize that the next step is to go in and steal all the silver. So AOC, I know that you're okay with uh, stealing some bread because people are hungry, but what happens when, uh, when people decide, when the populace, when the people, when the populists decide that they want to go after the, the silver cabinet, uh, after the rector, after, and in, in a modern world, it's not, it's not the religious people who are uh, the modern priests. The modern priests are the journalists. The modern priests are the academy, the modern... Uh, uh, the modern churches are the universities. Like what happens when the people decide that they want to loot and plunder Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford? What happens when they decide that they want to go in and start stealing not Louis Vuitton, not, um, not Hermes, not, uh, not, um, uh, uh, um, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, but they and not Nordstroms, but they want to go in and they want to uh, take over Stanford and Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and uh, and and Rice and uh, all the other places. What if they want to do that? What if they want to uh, burn down the academies? What if they want to burn down uh, the places of science? What if they decide they want to burn down? Uh, Department, uh, National Institute of Health or the CDC, like, like what Gaffigan should really be afraid of is what seems to be signified by what happened in, uh, in Maui, maybe, or what's happening in the West Coast. Like, I don't know who these arsonists are, but uh, I'm surprised that there's not way more uh, burning of rich second homes of of, uh, of the, of the second, third and fourth homes of the summer houses of the winter houses of the seasonal houses of the houses in Aspen that aren't being used of 
these places where there's the locals and then there's the seasonal owners like um these empty homes are are ripe to be uh looted and taken from and you know they're only being looted and taken from in order to give bread to starving children so that's okay right so that's what Gaffigan should be afraid of, eco-terrorism, climate terrorism, populism, um, or the, 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 the feeling that uh, the uh, missing middle class and the extreme rift between the extreme wealthy and the extreme poor, or the working poor, needs to be um, normalized by any means necessary. And that's what I'm afraid of. And you know what? That happened in a very real way during the Los Angeles riots. All the all the um, stores in Los Angeles that uh, were not performing well and that were losing money and that were underwater, all of a sudden became fully insured. And before you know it, uh, people were burning down their own businesses in order to take advantage of insurance money because of the uh, chaos associated with um, the L.A. riots. And so there's also going to be a lot of opportunism in the day and the age of uh, blaming blaming all catastrophes on climate change. If you are an insurance adjuster, like how can you come if someone goes ahead and is like, People aren't buying buggy whips anymore, or people have moved out of uh, people have moved moved out of cities, or people don't work downtown anymore. Like you can just blame looters, or you can just blame climate change, you can just blame um, uh, extreme weather, or you can just uh, blame whatever, and then you could torch your own or flood your own property, and you can get out from under a turkey and do exactly like what an extreme amount of people did. During the uh, during the L.A. riots and were those in the 90s and this is going to happen a lot and you in the fog of war in the fog of war and I'm talking about domestic war whatever this is meet lukewarm civil war lukewarm class war there's going to be a lot of opportunity costs when you go ahead and roll out a, everything happens because of climate change narrative you are going to take a lot of people who are going to jump on board and be opportunistic and take advantage of the situation. And you can turn to them and be like, um, no, no, you're taking advantage. You know, you got to touch your nose. You can be like, I see what you did there. Well played. And, and then people are going to become less and less uh, trusting of of um, of the man. They're going to become less and less trusting of uh, rules and values. They're going to believe that there's ubiquitous amount, ubiquitous amount of, of uh, hypocrisy, uh, the whole idea of do what I say, not what I do, um, uh, rules for thee, but not for me. And, um, and then it's going to be a ruckus. So I believe Gaffigan has every reason to be completely mind broke because if you can blame uh, Trump for anything, it's for telling the people that they are not cowed and giving them the audacity of hope, giving them a real feeling that they can take back everything because they've got the force of numbers and they've got the force of, of uh, the will of the people. And uh, when, uh, what's his name, the, uh, when people talk about the tyranny of the minority, they're not talking about the tyranny of a minority of Republicans or a tyranny of minority of the Democrats, they're talking about the tyranny of a minority, such as um, an LGBTQ agenda, quote unquote. I don't believe that's happening, but the perceivedness of, you know, what is it? Um, under 3% of the population is LGBTQIA plus or trans or, um, and completely the tyranny of a minority even includes the fact that there's only 13.9 or 12.9 or 13.5 percent of the population is African American, and if you include all um, minority groups and if you include all protected classes, then you really only have like at least 15 percent, and at most 20 percent. And if, like I'm always talking about. The 20% thinks it's the 80%. And until Trump, 
the 80% thought it was the 20%. This is um, pachyderm paradox, which is to say the pachyderm is brought up in a place where they're convinced they're surrounded by cops that don't exist, by um, uh, panopticon that doesn't exist, that there's literally enough people for all crime to be prevented. And if people, it's proven, I hate to say it, but 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 um, we now know that um, judges can decide not to take cases. We all know that um, attorney generals can decide what they do and don't want to prosecute. We all know that juries can and can't uh, be completely biased. We do know all of these things now. And now that everybody knows everything, all of the uh, scales have fallen from all of our eyes, and we've seen that there is no uh, blindness to to blindfolded justice, and that um, the uh, amazing uh, blind justice figurine is just a naked lady with a scale. At the end of the day, justice is just a naked lady with a scale, and uh, huh, huh, justice is just a naked white lady with a scale. So on that note, I think episode 57, season 5, is over. And this is the rantings of a madman, otherwise known as Chris Abraham, the Chris Abraham Show. Uh, follow me, join me, subscribe, like, follow, all that stuff. Love you, and have a great weekend. Bon weekend. Ciao. For listening to the Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.